How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the revamped or debut of the new Root News and Rumors show right here on the Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast, and it is entitled WWE Headlines. Yes, I took a little bit of a snippet we used to do on the Lowdown show and kind of made it into the new show, and we got rid of the Sunday Night Heat theme, and basically getting rid of the name so Derby doesn't hit us with a cease and desist. Because, you know, we wouldn't want to get hit one, <laughs> with one of those like the Young Bucks did. But anyways, guys, welcome to WWE Headlines. I would have loved to have gotten this live to you guys. I would have so loved it, but shit just hit the fan starting Sunday. We had the city people, and it had nothing to do with us. It was down the street, decided, hey, we should go over this power line and start messing around with it on a fucking Sunday morning. What do they do? They knock out our internet, and they knock out the TV. So... I don't even think it's just us. I think it's even everybody on the street. It's just all knocked out now. So I had no internet. I can't do any live streaming. Can't do anything. So I'd, all I could do was record this offline for you guys. But I'm still going to get out to you guys. And hopefully the internet will be back up by the afternoon. That's what they said. That way I can post it up for you guys and have it <laughs> available for you guys today. But uh, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are coming back or you knew the channel, we are a WWE Canadian WWE podcast. Said that a little bit wrong there. <laughs> Forgive me. I need to uh, still get my morning coffee in. It's been a rough, rough morning, as you just heard. But uh, we are your Canadian WWE podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say. Pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow us on Instagram if you're into that sort of thing. No Holds Barred WP, all one word. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters. And you can follow my co host on the Lowdown Show at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available to listen to you are available for you guys on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Spreaker is an awesome podcast app. You can also download it for the uh, Apple or Android devices. Um, other than that, guys, got a lot of news today, like tons and tons of news. I didn't do a Sunday Night Heat for like the last two weeks, and now we're called Thursday to be headlines. I haven't gotten any news to you guys in the last two weeks, and we got a lot today, and I didn't go back over two weeks and get that much news. It's just everything from this week. And if you're new to the show, that's basically what we do every Sunday. We build up... We, gather up all the news and rumors throughout the week and i deliver it to you guys on a sunday i know other podcasters such as jd from new york which i follow and other people like to do it throughout the week i don't have time to do that i have time on sundays to do this because i'm off on sundays and i can get out to you guys on a sunday so unfortunately i gotta wait till then to you guys to give you guys the news i know you guys a lot a lot of you guys out there tag us and stuff on uh twitter i appreciate that and i'll put it into the news if you guys ever want to do that so sorry you guys have to wait till sunday to get it but uh and hear my reaction to it and boy, do I have a reaction today, and I'm going to save my rant for the end of the show. That's where the big news and the probably the most cringe news that I've gotten in a long time at the end of this podcast. I'm saving that all for the end, and we'll go through a little bit of the you know, semi-important news for the beginning and the middle of the show. But uh, before we start the show, guys, uh, I'm still I'm working so hard on this new main event trailer. Um, tomorrow, I will be releasing the brackets for the main event classic on WWE 2K18. The series that myself and Corporate Cappy are going to be doing um, and commentating is going to be basically like the Cruiserweight Classic and the Mae Young Classic, but all main event talent. We're going to be doing a huge 30-man tournament on 2K18 and doing full sim. We're not going to be playing any characters. We're going to put on legend difficulty and just let them go at it. Hopefully, it's a good simulation. I did it with 2K17 and it actually ended up being pretty good. So myself and Corporate Cappy are going to be commentating that and doing the entire tournament. And I'm releasing the brackets to you guys tomorrow look at that look out for that on no holds bar wp or real kyle masters twitter account um other than that i think there's another unboxing video coming to the channel so lots of stuff coming to the channel as you can see we've revamped the logos we're revamping everything and uh, getting a new fresh look for you guys and uh i think that's it but yeah unfortunate unfortunate morning with no internet and it sucked because now i have to use data on my phone this morning and all that stuff and i really didn't want to use any data and the internet and tv is still down and it's almost 12 o'clock where i am now and i really hope they have it up by the afternoon so i can post this if not i'm gonna be really really ticked off more ticked off than i think i am <laughs> at the end of the show so uh other than that let's just jump right into it guys and get to the first bit of news and it is uh what happened with jimmy jacobs and you guys already probably already know what happened uh reportedly no longer working with WWE after the bullet club invasion you might recognize the name jimmy jacobs from his time in ring of honor where he is a former tag team champion with seth rollins for the past few years he has been working with WWE as a writer chris jericho gave him credit for being the one who helped create the list of jericho so Jimmy Jacob is one of the influences on the list of Jericho and, and that coming into play. So you can 
tell how much of a good writer this guy is and how much of a big loss this actually is to the WWE. Um, it turns out that he has recently parted ways with the WWE after what happened during the Bullet Club invasion a few weeks ago. And if you guys don't know, uh, a couple of Raws ago outside the arena, the Bullet Club, which was the Young Bucks, uh, Cody Rhodes, Brandy Rhodes, Marty Skrull. I don't remember if Candy Omega was there or not, but they are outside the arena causing havoc. Well, not that much havoc. They had a megaphone and doing some goon chirps. They weren't really doing anything that big. It's like they, I didn't think they wanted to go inside, but I think in the back of their heads they probably shouldn't. I think they're a little bit smarter than that. They're just being goons about it. But uh, according to a report from Ryan Satin of the Pro Wrestling Sheet, Jacobs is no longer working for the WWE. Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Oh, my God. I love this. <laughs> uh, according to the report, there is some major heat on Jacobs after he posed a f- uh, posed, uh, posted a photo alongside the Bullet Club during the invasion of Raw. This appears to have been the final straw for his WWE career. So if you guys haven't seen, there's actually a picture of him doing a selfie with all the people that were involved during the Bullet Club invasion. Dave Meltzer also confirmed the story. He says, just to let everyone know... The Jimmy Jacobs story is accurate about him not being with WWE and reasons listed by Pro Wrestling Sheet is 100% on the money. And if you on this article it shows the picture, I can see Nick Jackson, Matt Jackson, Marty Skrull, and I think that's Hangman Page in the background and there's some old random goon in the background. So I don't think Kenny Omega was there, but he, he uh, posted a picture on his Instagram saying, uh, Pleasant surprise to see old friends in lovely California. Hashtag BC Invasion. Hashtag Raw. Hashtag Young Bucks. Hashtag Bull Club. Hashtag Villain. Hashtag Hamming Page. Hashtag WWE. Okay. So I see both sides of the fence here. I see why WWE was pissed off about that. They wanted to really... In their eyes, I think, again, we've said it before, I think they should have acknowledged that, but because they didn't want to acknowledge it, this was probably bad for Jimmy Jacobs to do that. Um, of course, working with the company, you don't want to do anything WWE doesn't want to do and do something like that, especially t- those hashtags. You're incorporating both thing, both WWE and their hashtag into one for social media to see. That's really not something you probably shouldn't be doing. But then, like, it's just a selfie. Like, WWE needs to calm down half the time. Like, he's not letting them in the building. He's not doing anything that's going to jeopardize Monday Night Raw. Like he, did, he I know it, it, Derby loves their social media and they love pinning everything on social media. Like something happens on like a wrestler does something on social media, it's like just like that. Well, actually I can't say that some wrestlers have done some questionable things on social media and still working with the company, but this is what I don't get. So this guy's allowed or not allowed to post a selfie on Instagram of himself with some old friends. Uh, from Ring of Honor, and he's he's wrestled with them before. But Biggie's allowed to post a picture of a Kellogg's Fruit Loop box and say, "I hope WWE doesn't." Ha- or, do you, <laughs> WWE, do you have any more of those cease and desist letters? Like to me, it's like that's it also incorporating the Young Bucks because that's what that whole story is from. That's what Biggie is trying to make fun of. So to me, there's two sides of the fence here. I see where WWE is coming from. I see where Jimmy Jacobs will be coming from and where our fans are pissed off about that. To me, I'm just going to say WWE should probably not let everything freaking make them butt hurt. And Jimmy Jacobs, maybe next time, should probably think about think about twice about what he's doing. Maybe keep the selfie and post it on, I don't know, not even post it. It's just something you got to like be careful if you're working with WWE. I think Jimmy Jacobs should have known how sensitive WWE is before he even posted that. So, again, I see both sides of the fence here. Again, I'm going to be neutral about this. I understand where Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Jacobs is coming from, and I understand where the WWE is coming from. So that's that, and I don't really want to read any more news about that because it's really not that important, so we'll just skip on from that and get into the next article here. And this is an interesting article here, and I had to talk to you guys about this. Stephanie McMahon talks about WWE listening to their fans. Did did, did she say... what, What? Stephanie McMahon talks about the WWE listening to their fans. I already called bullshit before I even start reading this article. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Let's get into this article, shall we? Stephen McMahon recently spoke at the Fortune Most Powerful Women's Summit. One of the things that she spoke about was WWE be listening to their fans. And it being a key reason for the company's success. 
<laughs> oh, God. I'm going to have a hard time reading this, ladies and gentlemen. Here are some of the highlights of what she said during the summit. Quote from Stephen McMahon, Our audience tells us what they love and what they don't like. And worst, what they don't care about. Stephanie says that they do pivot on the fly and it is the advantage for the company for <laughs> that their shows are live. This is because they can get feedback from the audience in real time. She also says that there to be plans their storylines in advance, but things happen. Injuries can occur or fans don't relate to a certain character that they think will be a hit. She says that the ability to twist and shift gears is key for them. She also says NXT and NXT fans have the biggest say in who gets called up to the main roster. Our, our audience is actually determining what makes the next level, and they know it. Okay. So I'm going to stop right there. She knows about NXT. That, what she said about NXT is 100% right. Before that, and let me read this again. Our audience tells us what they love and what they don't like, and worse, what they don't care about. And this is the best part right here. <laughs> She also said that there will be plans or storylines in advance, but things happen. Injuries can occur, or fans don't relate to a certain character. Now, if they're fucking listening to the fans, why do they keep doing what they're doing with Roman Reigns when the fans, 90% of them, boo the shit out of him at every fucking arena he goes to? Don't even quote me about the fans recently. That's because of the whole Shield thing. And if it wasn't for Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, he wouldn't be getting cheered. Let, give me a fucking break. Don't, you can't sit here and tell me that he'd get cheered if they weren't there. But before that, and what they've done with Roman since fucking WrestleMania 33, they don't fucking listen to the fans. That's bullshit. They don't listen that the crickets... When Jinder Mahal comes out with that WWE Championship, they don't listen to the crickets. But you're telling me that that's saying that he's a good WWE Champion, we should keep the fucking title on this guy because no one does any re sort of reaction to him? No, because you want to please the people in India who are all Roman Reigns fucking fans. You make fucking sense, WWE. This article is complete bullshit. D Stephanie, I don't know if she even believes what she's fucking saying. Oh, she's a McMahon. I, of course she fucking believes what she's saying. Unbelievable. I can't believe I read that. WWE does not listen to the fans. They don't. They don't care. They'll do whatever they want to do. And it ultimately comes down to Vince McMahon's decision. He'll do whatever the fuck he wants to do. He'll push Jinder till next year's WrestleMania if he wants to, regardless of what the fucking fans want. He will put Roman Reigns in a second coronation at WrestleMania against uh, Brock Lesnar and beat his ass, regardless of what the fans are saying or reacting to. This article is bullshit. Complete and utter bullshit. I hate when they have fucking articles like this in interviews of people in the Derby that come out and say that Derby listens to the fans because you don't. You don't. You absolutely 150,000% do not listen to us. You don't give a shit. As long as we pour money into your company, we you just don't care. You do not care. I hate when they tell me that. I hate that. NXT is a different story, but I hate when, they, when I read shit like this. So we'll move on. Before I got to get a sip of coffee. Ah, okay. WWE rumors. So we got some rumors here. The reason why WWE chose Emma as Asuka's debut opponent. I really wanted to know this. Emma was able to defeat Sasha Banks, Bailey, Dana Brooke, and Alicia Fox on Monday Night Raw this week. As a result, she earned herself a match against Asuka at Table Ladders and Chairs pay-per-view. According to Dave Meltzer, in a, you know it's weird when they write that in articles. Why can't they just say TLC? You gotta spell out tables, ladders, and chairs. Anyways, according to Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, there is a reason why WWE chose Emma as a Os as Oscar's debut opponent. Emma was reportedly also the plan to be the first person to wrestle Oscar. This is because they have worked well together in the past and have put on high quality matches with one another. For those that don't remember, they faced off at NXT Takeover London, which I just pulled. Oscar's Matt Relic card from that event back in December of 2015. This was the only. This was only the second NXT Takeover event for Oscar, and her and Emma put on one of the best matches of the night. And I'm gonna 100% agree with that. That was actually a really good match. If you guys don't remember that, go back and watch it. The storyline was meh, but the wrestling was actually quality, like excellent, excellent quality. So I suggest you go, guys, go back and watch that. Um, for those that wanted Asuka's opponent to be Sasha Banks or Bailey, the feeling, according to Meltzer, is that those matches will be properly built towards in the future, which is 100% right. Asuka's debut will be all 
Asuka's debut will be all about making her look strong, and it makes sense to save those matches for later. Everybody and their sisters... Everybody and their sister knows that Asuka will likely be winning her debut match. The key will be to make her to look good in her first appearance on the main roster. And it looks like they're going to be trust Emma in this role. Which is great. As This kind of points towards the signs that uh, Asuka's going to win her debut match. And she should because if she lost her debut match. And there you go. There goes any credibility for Asuka going forward. I wouldn't even give a fuck about her going forward if she lost that match at TLC. But the fact that they're picking Emma to have a really good quality match at TLC with Asuka is great. I think they're going to put on a really good match. It's going to be a really good showing by Asuka, and Emma's going to do a really good job putting her over. I really enjoy that pick, and now I know why they picked her. I I was one of those people that thought maybe Sasha Banks should have been the TLC opponent, but I like that for once, Starter to be is looking at the bright side in this and and saying that uh, a match with Bailey and Sasha Banks needs to be properly built with Asuka actually being there, and hopefully they're saving that for like a Royal Rumble or even WrestleMania. I think it should be a big match like that. I honestly think it should be babyface Asuka against heel Sasha Banks at WrestleMania next year. Maybe if you include a triple threat with Bailey, that'd be something else to see. Um, I think that's what you're gonna do. You should do with those two for the time being, at least. So good at WWE is taking the, the proper route here with the uh, Emma being the chosen one to face Asuka at TLC and putting her over. I think WWE did a good job in doing that, and now we get clarification on why they picked Emma because of that Takeover London match. Back in December of 2015. And we're going to move on here. Another rumor. The original plans for Luke Harper and Eric Rowan's return. Eric Rowan and Luke Harper returned to SmackDown Live this week with a new look. Yeah, some Viking bludgeon brother look. It referred to themselves as the bludgeon brothers. And we're holding on to some giant mallets. <laughs> um, it looks like... <laughs> I'm sorry. It was just uh, when I seen the pictures on Twitter, I was dying. It looks like this is a fresh start for the former Wyatt family members, and it should be interesting to see how it develops over the next few weeks on SmackDown Live. Here are some notes on the original plans for Harper and Rowan. Mike Johnson of the Pro Wrestling Insider is reporting that the original plan for the return was to build them as a team that would be loosely based off Demolition. At the moment, it is unclear if that will be the case moving forward but if this bludgeon brothers gimmick will be something completely or if this bludgeon brothers gimmick will be something completely different also a few months ago it was reported that harper and rowan were expected to be revealed as the attackers of brazongo as many fans picked up that picked up on after their debut this week bludgeon brothers works properly with the 2b hint that was previously on the fashion files episode it is unclear if there would be still plans on revealing them as Brazongo's attackers, but it seems like a big possibility. And I actually think they're going to be the attackers because right now, who else could it be? Like, to be honest, who do, who the hell is it going to be? It just makes sense now. They, they repackage them to be the Bludgeon Brothers, the 2B thing, the Fashion Fouls. They're going to be the attackers, but I'm glad they're actually doing something with Eric Rowan and Luke Harper because they've been healthy for the last couple of months they haven't been fucking hurt they just didn't know what to fucking do with them they've been on dark matches they've been on pre-show well, they even be on pre-show. they've been on dark matches or not even the show at all so i'm glad they actually found something i really hope it works we'll see how the fans react to the bludgeon brothers over the next couple of weeks i think the smartest thing to do was actually incorporate them into that brazongo storyline because if you're just going to have them come out and just squash people and no one's going to get behind that have them be the people to be behind the attacks of brazongo Get Brazongo into that baby face role. Get Luke or Harper and Rowan into that uh, heel role. Get some heat around them. Have them keep attacking Brazongo. And you can have Brazongo get an underdog win at like the next SmackDown pay or even at Survivor Series. Um, so I think they're going to go in that direction. And good for Luke Harper and Eric Rowan for finally getting on fucking TV. Because they've been like MIA for like the last, what, five or six months. And Luke Harper especially is a huge boss because Luke Harper is actually a phenomenal wrestler and I wish they used him more and a lot of people out there agree with me and you and I know you guys do because Luke Harper is an incredible piece of talent and what they did with Randy with the whole Randy Orton thing at, at first should have led to a triple threat match at WrestleMania but they didn't they just kind of stopped that and that was the last time we see that was the last we've seen of, of Luke Harper so we'll see if this works as bludgeon brothers nonsense we'll see <laughs> And I guess it's one of the things that we just got to see and see how it goes. I really hope it it does become successful. So we shall see. Uh, next bit of news. 
Actually, it's not really news. It's just uh, some uh, explanation. So the Undisputed Era, we get an expl- explain. Explain. Yeah. Okay, I need another sip of coffee. My God. Rough, rough morning, ladies and gentlemen. I got woken up at like 9 a.m. this morning, okay? I worked the night before. I got woken up at 9 a.m. because of this whole internet nonsense. So I'm a little, still a little fuzzy from this morning. The Undisputed Era and an explanation to the meaning behind their name. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish made their big impact at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, th- Brooklyn 3. A few weeks later, WWE revealed some new merchandise, dubbing them as the Undisputed Era. There have been mixed reactions so far to the name, but there is no doubting the talent of all three men in the group. There were recently interviewed by WWE where they explained the meaning behind their name. Uh, Here's how Adam Cole explained it. Quote from Adam Cole, When you say the word undisputed, what do you think of? You think of something that is untouchable, undeniable. Myself, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly are all of those things. We are proven before... We have proven before, sorry. We have proven before we got here that we are one in a mil- before we got here that we are one in a million and we'll do it again here in NXT. Also people talk about the difference in eras in wrestling, the golden era, the attitude era, the reality era. <laughs> I love how he mentions the reality era. This is our era. It's our time to show the world who runs this sport. That is a great great answer from Adam Cole, man. I I see a lot of big things coming from Undisputed Era. Um Kyle O'Reilly also spoke about the name. He says, The Undisputed Era isn't just a cute name that's meant to sell a bunch of t-shirts. It's our mantra. It's our way of life. Our success is a direct result of the effort and dominance that we put forth inside the squared circle. We are undisputed. This is our era. So I like that. I earlier like the the explanation of the name behind Undisputed Era because I was one of those people at first when I seen um, the name Undisputed Era, I'm like, it doesn't really sit well with me yet. It, it's kind of cool. I love the shirt. The shirt design was awesome. Um, but the name still kind of has to grow on me. Now I get this explanation. I'm like, okay, it, this kind of makes more sense. And I am I just love the. It's it's basically the talent alone in this faction that makes up the group. You don't, you can, the Undisputed Air name, it's, it's meh. It's what makes up this group that means more. Like you had, I know you had like Evolution as that last big faction and the Shield and those kind of made sense. Maybe Later on, this will kind of make more sense. Maybe they'll go in-depth on TV about it, and we'll get more of a meaning than this explanation. But this explanation alone makes a lot of sense, and, and I'm glad they came out and did something like this. And I'm so looking forward to the future with Undisputed Era and hoping Adam Cole wins at least the NXT Championship and is the next champion after Drew McIntyre. So that is it with that in that name, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into some more news here. Former WWE employee claims responsibility for the series of storyline leaks. Oh, this should be fun. Former WWE employee James McKenna, who is now working with Pro Wrestling Sheet, revealed that he was the individual behind a series of accurate storyline leaks that frustrated officials within the WWE. If you've been following the dirt sheets, you would have seen reports a few years back that came from the Squared Circle Reddit page that credited a user by the name of Falcon Arrow that re- would reveal big stories from Dare to Be. Some of these stories leaked were Samoa Joe's debut at NXT, Shane McMahon's surprising return, and Sami Zayn's main roster call-up. Despite his popularity, details about his true identity remain scarce. James McKenna has now openly come out on social media and indicated that he was in fact the individual behind the Reddit account for the user Falcon Arrow. <laughs> which has been confirmed by uh, moderators on Reddit who knew Falcon Arrow's identity. He tweeted out with the uh, surprised owl gif. Fun fact, in case you haven't figured it out yet, it was me. I did the deal. <laughs> oh, man. Interesting, interesting. And that's actually... Uh, I remember actually seeing that a few years ago, the whole Falcon Arrow Reddit thing. And I thought it was weird. I thought maybe it might have been just someone... Um, trolling but and, and somehow getting those sources from somewhere but it ends up being john Mc, or josh mckenna interesting if you guys know all about that there you go that's the news on that i'm just gonna move on from that there's really nothing else to talk about that but uh, i guess good for mckenna kind of let, letting us in on some of the the dirt sheets <laughs> i don't know uh let's move on what do we got here more rumors on why neville is pushing for his release 
from the WWE and a specific reason on why he is unhappy. I know this is a really, really huge topic and huge, uh, huge deal for a lot of you guys out there. I've seen a lot of you guys tweeting about it, so let's get into it. The topic that is dominating the wrestling world over the past few days has to do with Neville. A ton of rumors have circulated about Neville asking for his WWE release. According to a report of Mike Johnson of the PW Insider, we have some more details on Neville and a specific reason on why he is unhappy. The report says that according to two different sources, Neville is pushing for his release in order to build his name outside of the company. This would be similar to what Drew McIntyre recently did before returning to NXT. No question that promotions around the world would love to have Neville. I would love to have Neville in my company if I owned one, man. The guy is probably like the best wrestling talent on the roster right now. And the fact that everybody doesn't see that is really fucking sad. Um, according to the report, there are several reasons why, Darby, or why Neville is unhappy. One specific reason was due to his match at, against Austin Aries being left off the WrestleMania 33 DVD. Now, I didn't know that. Wow, it's not even on the DVD? That's fucking sad. I'd be pissed too. The match was on the kickoff show, and the DVD doesn't include the kickoff show matches. What? Why doesn't it include? It's a three-disc DVD. How do you not fit the free show on there? Give me a break. <laughs> oh, that's sad. That's that's. Thank God I don't buy WrestleMania DVDs. As a result, he made no royalties from the biggest-selling DVD of the year. Are you kidding me? I'd be pissed too. Come on. For what it's worth, Johnson disputes the rumors that Neville walked out after learning he would be losing to Enzo on Raw. I've heard that. Johnson says Neville wasn't even on Raw on Monday. According to the report, Neville has not been released by the WWE. There's still a chance he works things out with the WWE, but as of right now, he isn't slated into any cruiserweight plans or won't be traveling with the company. And I also heard out of today that um, WWE is trying to make Neville stay like 100%. You don't have to give that guy a shit ton of money. I'm just telling you right now, if you didn't include him in the WrestleMania 33 DVD and you know, he's lost on, on lost out on any royalties from that DVD selling, which I guarantee you in some countries and some places people buy DVDs still and will go nuts and line up outside the building before the store opens to get that WrestleMania 33 DVD because some people out there love that whole WrestleMania and I thought it was mediocre at best and I would never actually buy a WrestleMania DVD unless it was actually worth buying. I take another sip of coffee there, but I can't believe that. I can't believe I read that. They left him and Austin Aries off the pre-show. They left the, the, not even that the whole kickoff match or show off the DVD. You're telling me you can't fit the pre-show on a three-disc DVD set? That's a load of fucking crap. Unbelievable, man. That, no, I no no wonder Neville's pissed. And then finding out that you're gonna lose to Enzo clean on Raw in a rematch for the cruiserweight title. Yeah, I'd probably walk out too. I'm just saying, I fucking walk out too. I'd be like, fuck you guys, I'm out of here. I don't blame Neville. I don't blame him at all. So, Darby, if you're going to work on trying to get this guy to stay, it's going to take a lot. You're going to have to give him back to Cruiserweight Tyler. You're going to have to give him back some money. Like, I think Neville's gone. To be honest, I think he's gone. I don't think he's going to be sitting around any longer. I honestly think he's he's going to be going. And, and you know what? It's It's smart for him to do that. I mean, look what look what Cody Rhodes has done. Look what Drew McIntyre has done, leaving the company, getting his name big out there, and then WWE saying, "Oh fuck, we gotta sign this guy back." Look how big he is with the Indies, and all the indie fans that watch WWE are gonna be happy and follow this guy and buy into him. They're buying into him now. You see how many people are pissed off on Twitter because Neville could be leaving the WWE. Everyone's pissed. I don't understand how WWE sits there and goes, "Oh, there must be not be any Neville fans." Well, for one, you ruined 205 Live. You buried him in 205 Live. If you had 205 Live on Wednesdays, like I've always said, and actually made it more credible, Neville would be over as fuck. But the fact that you've buried him on Raw and buried him in the 205 Live division, no wonder he wants to leave the company. I would leave the company if I was him as well. So, And I got some news about um, the whole Neville trying to leave to make a name for himself because apparently wrestlers are seeking advice on potentially on their potential exit. From the WWE. So not even just Neville. More of your main roster people are doing the same thing. How does fucking WWE not sit here and wonder what the fuck is going on? Do they just not, again, like I said before, they don't care. They absolutely don't give a flying fuck. It's interesting. So, let's get into this rumor about wrestlers seeking advice on potential exits from the WWE. A bit of an interesting rumor that share, 
to share with all of the talk circulating about Neville and his potential departure from the WWE. As noted prior, one of the rumors going around is that Neville wants to build his name around the world, similar to what Drew McIntyre did. If the rumor is is to be believed, he isn't the only person on the WWE roster that is considering the move elsewhere. Rumor comes to us from Joe Lanza on the Val Flagship Podcast. I'm not sure how credible that is. Um, he says that he knows for a fact that some WWE stars are asking Cody Rhodes for advice on leaving the WWE. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, WWE, you're so screwed. No specific names are mentioned, so I'll take this with a grain of salt, but it's an interesting topic of discussion. I don't blame... I, I probably... When I probably agree with that. I bet you there are some people out there asking advice. I guarantee you, the people that are being underutilized and buried and not used, being used properly, guarantee they're asking those like Cody Rhodes and and Drew, they're probably asking Drew McIntyre too. Like, what did you like? What do you do? What did you do to get out of here? Um, here is what Lanza said on the podcast: Cody doesn't have uh, doesn't have any plans on going to the WWE anytime soon. There's wrestlers in WWE going to him and getting advice on their own exit plans from the company. I know this for a fact. I can't give you the names. I know there's a bit of a, a dick tease, but I can't say the names, but there's wrestlers that go to him for advice on how to leave the company. I guarantee you, I can already tell you who they are. Neville, for sure. Dolph Ziggler, 100%, is probably going to Cody Rhodes about that. Um, you can talk my head. Probably other people. I... I've, I wouldn't. I, probably not AJ Styles. He's probably fine with that. Kevin Owens is fine. Um, Daniel Bryan. I would one hundred percent probably is like under the radar and going through people about aging WWE. But it's insane, man. I, I wouldn't doubt there's actually wrestlers that are doing that right now because right now WWE is is becoming cringe and, and un, like unwatchable. It, it's bad. I don't blame the wrestlers that want to leave because they're not being used properly. They're fucking focusing everything around Jinder Mahal and Roman Reigns. Um, with the amount of success of some of the wrestlers are having outside of WWE at the moment, we have to wonder if some WWE stars are thinking that they could do the same. Well, duh. The Bullet Club have shirts in Hot Topic and are providing and are proving that you don't need to be in WWE to make money in wrestling. Maybe other WWE stars are starting to feel like that and they could do the same. Oh, and probably also that they get the TV time and probably more <laughs> more attention than they are on WWE television. Oh, God. Any names tossed out would probably... Okay. The rest of the article doesn't say anything. So that's just nuts. I can't believe there's... Besides Neville, there are more people... Probably, I mean, it's a rumor, and take it with a great assault, that are going out and, and looking for their Darby's or asking people on advice on their Darby release. That is insane, man. You know some, some shit's messed up inside the Darby, and we, know, we all know that. But, God, that's just... That's shocking, man. Darby needs to figure it out. Uh, former TNA Knockouts champion and several more females reportedly attend a recent WWE tryout. Ooh. Darby recently ran a tryout at the Performance Center in Orlando. According to reports from SquaredCircleSirens.com and PWInsider.com, we have a list of female stars that received a tryout with the WWE this week. This includes former TNA Knockouts champion and more names that you may have heard of. Here are some of the names. According to PW Insider, Madison Rain. If you guys don't know who that is, I'm shocked you don't. Recently attended a tryout. Derby has reportedly had interest in her since July. Rain is a five-time TNA Knockouts champion. Here are some of the names that also received tryouts according to the Squared Circle Sirens. Carlina Gore, alternate model, fi fire breather, and stunt woman. Karen Q. Just Karen Q. I guess they don't want to say her last name. Has worked for promotions such as Beyond Wrestling and Ring of Honor. Alexis Kelly, fitness model, athlete, and bikini competitor. I don't know why Vince wants one of her. Natalia Markova, Russian independent wrestler. Well, that's pretty cool. Federica Amartia, Martia, Rush, or, sorry, personal trainer and model. And Logan Holler, professional boxer with an undefeated record of 8-0. I don't know what you do with her. Maybe you do something with, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, oh, I can't. I'm drawing a blank. You know, it's okay. She's in NXT. You guys know who I'm talking about. Maybe do something with her. 
But interesting. Big name, all, obviously, is Madison Rain, and her getting a trial in Derby is very interesting in her. I really hope they sign her. That would be a huge signing, and I think Derby and, sorry, NXT, or even the Derby women's roster needs some competitors here, so I hope they sign Madison Rain. That would be a huge signing, so hopefully everything works out for her. I uh, got some more news here, guys. Big hint on the next Elimination Chamber match. So I've been wondering this myself, if they were even going to have an Elimination Chamber, pay uh, chamber pay-per-view, and we got the news right here. The last Elimination Chamber pay-per-view took place February 2017, so earlier this year, and, and the event had Bray Wyatt defeat AJ Styles, Corbin, Ambrose, Cena, and Miz to win the WWE Championship. We might have received a big hint from Kurt Angle about what the next Elimination Chamber match when will be. With Clash of Champions being a SmackDown exclusive show on in December, it looks like Raw might be getting this year's Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. This hasn't been officially announced but WWE, or by WWE, but it seems like this could be the case. Kurt Angle on Facebook gave a small indicator that a woman's Elimination Chamber match, ooh, that's interesting, could be coming soon for the ladies of the Raw brand. This would be a history-making match as it would be the first time the women have competed inside the structure in WWE history. And someone asked him on Facebook, this Scott Southam guy, he said, why haven't we all, or why haven't we seen an all-women's elimination chamber match for the Raw Women's Championship title belt? Kurt Angle says, patience, you will. All right, all right. So I don't know, that really doesn't mean anything. It doesn't really tell you that we're going to get one, but coming from Kurt Angle and the official, that's the official Kurt Angle Facebook account, it looks like Raw is probably going to get the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view in February of next year, and we're probably going to get the first ever women's Elimination Chamber match. It looks like Asuka, Bailey, Sasha Banks, uh, Alicia Fox, Emma, and Dana Brooke will probably be the participants inside that. Uh, it just you see you you name that. Besides the top three, there I would include Emma. Four out of the six Raw women are relatable not even relatable, or make the division. Because Alicia Fox and Dana Brooke for sure don't make up anything in that division. So, you see how depleted their division is. Um, but interesting. Women's Elimination Chamber match. I'm all for that. We'll see what happens when the time comes. Alright. So, we are getting to the end of the show. And I apologize for me screaming in the next little while here. Um... And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll leave the rumor for the end, the big rumor and the big outburst because of what's planned for Survivor Series. For now, it's going to focus on one of those Survivor Series opponents, and that is the worst WWE champion I have ever seen, Jinder Mahal. So i got a couple of things on Jinder Mahal before we get into the Survivor Series story. And again, I do apologize for my ranting here. It's just I don't like Jinder, Jinder Mahal. I'm sorry. I'm not, I can't get behind Jinder Mahal. He's the worst WWE champion ever. He's the worst moveset. He's the worst charisma. He does nothing for that championship. The championship is getting fucking buried. And the fact that you people out there that don't agree with me, you're blinded. Derby has literally fed you the Kool-Aid, opened your mouth, and dropped the Kool-Aid down your throat to make you believe that Jinder Mahal is a good WWE champion. He generates heat. No, he fucking doesn't. He generates crickets. No sound comes out of anyone's mouth when he comes out. You saw those fuck. He can't even cut a promo right. They did the same fucking promo for the same three weeks because they don't know what else to do with him because he can't do anything. He can't have a feud with anybody. He's got. He just went up against Shinsuke Nakamura and it was the worst feud ever. He can't do anything. And the fact that the only reason why they're putting the title on him is to boost their market in India, who are all fucking Roman Reigns fans. That's why it makes no sense. Anyways. Jinder Mahal reveals the top matches for the WWE, in, WWE lives, in, live events in India coming in this December. WWE will be running two live events in India in December. They'll be taking place in New Delhi at the Indira Gandhi Indoor Stadium. One of the main selling points of the show will be the WWE champion Jinder Mahal. Jinder is in India at the moment to promote the events. He participated in a Facebook Live interview with Mahir Joshi where he revealed some of the big matches that, he will be take, that will be taking place in India. Jinder says that he'll be defending the WWE Championship against Kevin Owens. So Kevin Owens is going to be the opponent for him in the live events in India. Jinder also revealed that Roman Reigns will be facing Braun Strowman at the event. Why would the fuck would he uh, like promote that? Like, who cares? You're talking about you and your WWE Championship. Why the hell would you promote Reigns and Braun Strowman? Anyways, 
The events are taking place December 8th and 9th for you guys that fucking care. I don't, and Kevin Owens is probably going to get buried because Jinder Mahal is being... And you guys wondering why two heels are facing each other in India. Apparently, Jinder Mahal is a face in America, in North America. He is a heel. That makes so much sense, right? Well, that's why he's the great champion. He's a heel. Shut the fuck. Shut the fuck up. He's not the. He's nowhere close to a good WWE champion. He's buried the title. In like the the title power rings, if you will, I'd say the WWE championship is at like a five. I think the women's championship is above the WWE title right now. That is, and not and not saying not putting anything against the women. Just saying your champ WWE championship should be the the top prize. Should be number one, but it's not because. I'm telling you right now, it's because of Jinder Mahal. It was on, it was on the waist of AJ Styles. It would be 100% different. So let's get into another article about Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal says, <laughs> because I'm a huge CM Punk fan, this really hurt me. Jinder Mahal says he can surpass CM Punk's 434-day title reign. Yeah, let that soak in for a second. I'm going to take a drink of coffee. Let that soak in. Jinder Mahal says he can surpass CM Punk's 434-day title reign. Yeah, I almost spit out my coffee. Are you fucking kidding me? Let's read this, shall we? While speaking to Sports Kita, Jinder Mahal was asked if he believes that he can surpass... Well, for one, he's speaking to Sports Kita, so there you go. There's credibility out the fucking window. He believes that he can surpass CM Punk's impressive 434-day title reign, and Mahal seemed confident that he would. Absolutely think I can. Why not? I believe I have. I haven't even entered my prime yet. Oh my god! Uh, so I am 31 years old. I'm already there to be champion for 140 something days. You don't even know how many days you've been champion for. Way to get into that interview. I've 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 a lengthy. I've had a lengthy title run ahead of me, and many more title runs yet to come. Surpassing CM Punk's title reign isn't only a goal on Jinder Mahal's list. Mahal also reveals that he talked about his dream WrestleMania opponents. Brock Lesnar, that would be amazing. Or someone like John Cena. Even John Cena is such a big, big star here in India. <laughs> so is Roman Reigns. It would be a blockbuster match, especially if I beat someone like John Cena. I would really establish my own legacy. No, 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 no. no. You beat John Cena, you're not anything, Jinder Mahal. Relax. You're being pushed down our throats just like rain. Both guys, number one guys on Raw and SmackDown are being pushed down our fucking throats. And it's so sickening. And no wonder why everyone wants to fucking leave the company. Because of shit like this. But the fact that he says he can pass CM Punk's 400. If we had over 400 days with Jinder Mahal as WWE Champion, you might as well fucking put the WWE Championship belt on the fucking shelf. Because it means absolutely fucking nothing. It means nothing at this point. It would mean absolutely garbage. I look at it like a piece of trash at that point. And if he ever passed CM Punk's record, I'm done. I'm so fucking done with watching the main roster. I'm done. I'll watch strictly NXT, and that's it. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. <laughs> and we got some more news about Jinder Mahal. Apparently, he's working through an injury. Jinder Mahal retained his WWE Championship at Hell in a Cell. Jinder has been wrestling through an injury since then. According to the report, Jinder has been working through a shoulder injury that has been bothering him for the past little while. Now, this guy is wrestling injured, and I don't know how what the extent of his injury is, but he's seen with uh, that Cesaro tape around his shoulder. If it's bad, and I'm, it's bad to say this, and that's probably why he's doing all the promotion right now, just so he can heal up his injury. Because if he was ever hurt enough to the point where he couldn't wrestle, I'd say take the fucking title off him because that is not fair. You can't keep the title on an injured person. Brock Lesnar is the only one that can leave for four months with a title and then come back. Not Jinder fucking Mahal. He doesn't get the treatment. But whatever. He's hurt, apparently. And that's probably why he's doing all these uh, things and he's off WWE TV. <laughs> Alright, this leads into like the main story here. And I, I, when I heard this over the weekend, I'm going, holy fuck, we switched to just reviewing NXT like the perfect fucking time. I can't believe... They actually want to fucking go through with this. And the fact that there are people out there right now, I've read on Twitter, and I've read on, on blogs, and I've read on uh, uh, like Reddit and stuff like that, there are people fucking out there that agree with this and that are actually excited about this. Are you fucking high? No. 
How can you sit there and accept this? Now listen to this. The 2017 edition of Survivor Series takes place on November 19th in Houston. Survivor Series is always one of the biggest shows of the year, and Derby will be looking... Sorry, my article just went somewhere. There you go. There you will be looking to stack the card. If a new rumor is to be believed, Derby is planning on booking an interesting main event on... <laughs> interesting. Of the show that involves title holders from both Raw and SmackDown Live. According to Dave Meltzer in the daily update of F4W Online, the planned main event of Survivor Series... Get ready, okay? I gotta... I don't know if I'm ready for this. Uh, I don't know if I want to read this again. I can't believe they're fucking doing this. If, if, if this is true. The planned main event is Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Let that one fucking soak in. Are you freaking kidding me? Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, you guys have done it this time. This is a quote from Dave Meltzer. Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal was neither, with neither championship at stake. So the title's not even on the line. Is right now the plan for the main event Survivor Series in Houston. Oh, where, what happened to the whole Finn Balor story? Like, are you freaking kidding me? Why wouldn't you just put Brock Lesnar and Finn Balor get that shit out of the way? We know Finn Balor is going to lose. Why wouldn't you just get that fucking out of the way? Why do we have to sit here and 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 watch Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar? What the fuck? <laughs> Who's going to win this match? They could go either way. They could have... You, actually, you can't have it either way. You need to have Jinder win. You need to have him look strong going into Indian the live events with that title. There's no way Brock Lesnar even, but then there's no Brock. Yeah, there's no way Brock Lesnar squash gets squashed by Jinder Mahal after the year he's had. <laughs> this is why I don't doesn't fucking make sense. Are you kidding me? That's why. That's why I can't stand the main product right. Their main roster product right now. It is absolutely garbage. You wonder why I rant about it on Twitter week after week during the show on the booking of this goddamn show. It makes absolutely no sense. And the fact now that they lost Jimmy Jacobs as a head writer, we're fucked. We're not going to get any storyline that we want. We're going to get. It's going to come down to Vince McMahon. I can't believe he even agrees with something like that. That's just. You know what? I actually can believe that. It's sickening. Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm done. I'm done. I can't. I'm sorry, guys. That's pretty much my opinion. You know my opinion about Jinder Mahal. Brock Lesnar, it is what it is. But the fact that he's going to face Jinder Mahal at Survivor Series in the main event, I'm done. I don't even fucking watch the pay-per-view. I don't even want to review it. I'm not going to do predictions for it. Survivor Series is shaping up to be worse than SummerSlam so far. Why are they making their big four pay-per-views the worst? Like This has been the worst for the big four pay-per-views this year. Even last year was even bad. I don't fucking get it. What is going through their heads? What is going through their heads that they're sitting here right now and going, oh, what's going to make a good main event for Survivor Series? Could we do oh, Raw versus SmackDown, Survivor Series tag match, ah, something like that, or maybe we have our titles on the line. Oh, let's put Jinder Mahal and Brock Lesnar in a match against each other. No titles on the line, though. Yeah, that makes fucking sense. Good job. Good job, WWE. Good fucking job. You just book the worst main event in WWE history. And the fact that you want to do a Raw versus SmackDown, like Brock Lesnar's on Raw, Jim Hall's on SmackDown, it's way too early or way too late for that shit. You should have had this built for months. You can't just build Survivor Series on a on brand warfare in four weeks. That makes literally no sense. Unfucking believable. I can't believe that. The, I when I read that article, I'm just like. I'm done. I'm so glad we're just reviewing NXT from now on. <laughs> you guys wonder why we want to do that. Exhibit A and exhibit everything. That's it. Take That takes the cake. Oh, my God. What an interesting news week, ladies and gentlemen. I still can't believe that. If you guys are interested in that, please look yourself in a mirror and tell yourself, what the fuck am I watching? Why did I say that? Why do I agree with this? Don't sit there and accept mediocre booking. Come over to the light. 
Get away from the dark side. Come over to the light and see what we see. And it's pure bullshit. Anyways, guys. That is going to wrap it up for WWE Headlines, the WWE News and Rumor Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your WWE Canadian podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters and my co-host at Cobra Cappy. You can go follow us on Instagram if you're into that thing and at all no... No holes barred, WP, all one word. If you guys want to listen to us on the go, we're available to listen to on iTunes and Stitcher and also Spreaker. That's available for all Android and Apple devices. You can also watch the podcast on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. And make sure you give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host as always, guys, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you next time.